I'm back from the flea market where I picked up this beast, a TMK TV radio cassette recorder. I've never heard of TMK before. The guy said this came out of a garage where it had been sitting for 30 years. And I believe him. Let's that say October 1978. Well, let's see if I can clean it up and do any maintenance on it and see what works and what doesn't. All right, we have enough of the, uh, most of the loose dirt off, at least enough to bring it into the house. As you can see, we have a 5-inch screen, uh, settings for VHF, low and high, and UHF. There's our channel selector dial, low VHF 2 to 6, high VHF 7 to 13. And we have a condenser microphone. You can see some of the uh, transport controls for the cassette recorder, which is up here. We'll get to that in a minute. We have our radio FM and AM dial scale. And our radio tuning dial here. Down here we have our function selector, TV radio, or here it's off except for the cassette player. We have our band selector, FM or AM. We have our tone control here and our volume control here. As we saw earlier, um, when I first brought it in to the workbench, it was 1978. I researched this since then and I have found that the only other ones I see on the internet are 1981 or 1982. And there are several cosmetic differences. These two controls here are now horizontal slider controls. And these controls here are all a more traditional circular control with just an aluminum bright thing in the middle. And also there's bright coverings on the selector switches for the cassette controls. So somewhere between 1978 and the early 80s, they made some changes here. Let's look up on top for a minute. Okay, up on top we have our first badging that we see, TMK TV Radio Cassette Recorder. And TMK stands for Toyo Minka. They were in Secaucus, New Jersey. And it's made in Japan. And also we have our antenna, the speaker port there, ventilation duct works. And around here we have our cassette recorder, normal transport functions. And here we have something, I think something fell on this at one time. There's a little oddity here with the plastic that seems to be a little lower here, plus the counter reset button has been knocked off apparently so I think there was some damage there and this part here seems to affect the eject because it doesn't want to come up right I can get it open and play tapes and things but it's not smooth like it should be unfortunately so that's uh, one problem in the counter button so yeah I think something fell here and we also have a carrying handle that you can also put under the television to support it when you've got it on a table or something. All right, looking around the left side, we have brightness and contrast controls for the television picture. We have a selector switch if you're going to use the rod antenna or an external antenna. Then we have our UHF and 
VHF 300 ohm connectors. And over here we have our horizontal and vertical hold controls. And right here we have what I'm assuming is a mod. Um, I don't see this in any pictures on the internet of any of the other ones. Now the other ones I see are the early 80s, but this has every appearance of being a mod. Nothing around the back uh, except some ventilation ductwork and four small rubber feet. Obviously they're going to stand this on the bottom here. Protect your surfaces. Around the right side we see our power connections. A 12 volt jack, our 120 AC jack, and you could have this set to normal if you're using batteries or to charge if you're using the rechargeable battery that this came with. And over here we have our connection for our cassette recorder microphone, um, the mic and a remote jack, and an auxiliary input and an earphone jack. And then this is obviously a mod too. That's not in any of the pictures that I find on the internet. Oh, that pr became pretty easy what that was designed for. When I found something inside, I'll show you in a minute. Let's turn it over and look at the bottom. All right, underneath we have our manufacturing information, four types of power sources. And this is manufactured at the Fuqui, Fuquai factory. I'm apologizing if I'm mauling the pronunciation. Sorry about that. Orion Electric Company Limited in Takifu City, Fukui Prefecture, Japan. Manufactured October 1978. Alright, let's scoot over and look at the battery compartment. Here's our battery compartment. I had heard something rattling around whenever I carried this unit around as I got it. Didn't know what it was. But when I opened the battery compartment, I found it. An audio cable, monaural. And the little uh, red plastic things here are really, really kind of half sticky and half greasy. But this pretty much proved to me what that mod was over there on the cassette side. And this took nine D-cells in little plastic sleeves which I don't have so we won't be using the battery thing and you can look at the um, there's sort of an outline here for the rechargeable battery nine and a half volts that this would have taken you can see the little uh, jacks there so We'll be trying this on batteries. All right, let's close it up and see if anything works. Okay, I have a uh, 300 ohm connector hooked up from my digital to analog converter and an antenna I have on the floor. So let's try out the television. Honda Fishers. Now is the time to get a great deal on a brand new all Some channels come in better than others. That could be the antenna. I'm not sure. With a Honda of Fishers, it zero down certainly looks lease. better when you donate your car, truck, boat, or RV to Goodwill. Where I am, we'll probably than where you are. You take the selling price off your taxes. The money stays in central Indiana. But it's not bad. And it works. Like that, one car this whole unit reminds me of the Panasonic. TR5000 I demonstrated last year, except this one, the television actually works, and so does the cassette recorder. Yeah, right there. All right. Oh, okay, okay. So some people did just that. Um, some people on Instagram, I mean, they're taking all handles of social media, yes, right? Exactly. When it shows graphics, you get an audio interference, sort of. 
So now you'll never have to make the trip to the gas station or deal with those expensive, messy can inflators. The Took me a bit to find out where on this dial to pull in the reception at. It's not exactly channel three or four. It's kind of in between. It stops automatically, so you get the right amount of air for. Having figured out what those uh, two modifications were, they were obviously for speaker out. Like I've got this into my old little Morocco speaker. Or they might have used it with a little, one of those little white earphone things that used to come with transistor radios. But it's a better, bigger sound. There are all kinds of reasons for a man to wander into our town. This guy uh, made a couple of good modifications here. Audio out for the television and audio out for the cassette recorder. Larry Garner was welcomed, as few men had been before him. Turning the volume down there. All right, let's try out the cassette recorder. Odd eject problem there. This is my walking tape you've heard before. speaker in here to the side and see what it sounds like. here well I wonder if we can record we'll try the condenser mic down here all right we'll put the blank tape in try and run past the leader for a minute record and play it gets that feedback but it does all right I'm using the condenser microphone on the TMK all-in-one unit testing the recording capabilities on the cassette recorder I get a big audio feedback on the condenser mic and if I try using the microphone in its remote I get continual feedback uh, makes it unusable I don't know if I'm doing something wrong on that or not. But let's wind this back and see what it sounds like. Oh, the record light is on, by the way. Um, don't know if you'll be able to see that. I guess not. Oh, maybe. Maybe not. It says auto stop, but it takes forever to do it. Be ready for some feedback here. Probably recorded it. I don't know why it gets that feedback, but it does. 
All right, I'm using the condenser microphone on the PMK all-in-one unit, testing the recording capabilities on the cassette recorder. I get a big audio feedback on the condenser mic, and if I try using the microphone in its remote, I get continual feedback. That makes it unusable. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong on that or not. But let's wind this back and see what it sounds like. Oh, the record light is on, by the way. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It's not. All right, I thought we'd try recording off the radio. I've got it set to uh, one of those AM sports stations, which hopefully will keep us from getting any copyright problems. I've got the volume turned down on the unit, so uh, we won't have to listen to it as we record it. And if this thing works, we should get AM radio when we stop and rewind, which I think we might as well do right now. I have to remember to put the uh, function control back to cassette player. Turn the volume back up. I, I, I used it earlier. I said historically strong. I think sometimes we kind of bite in, into the hyperbole a little bit too soon. But this is a is a respected and touted uh, draft yeah, class that you're trying to rebuild AM. and retweak. This is certainly the time to do it, which is why you and I both like Whether that's a poor reception great. problem or poor recording problem, I'm not yeah. sure. But it records off the radio, too. So it kind of works. Got the door problem, counter button problem. I don't think the speeds. Maybe 90%, I'm not sure. All right, let's give the radio a try. Always got to try and stay off these songs for not too long there. For a classic fish sandwich. Well, the tough times are behind you. Is it's not too sensitive. I get all my really good local channels well, but not a lot else. Life can change as quick as a kiss. Right, let's try AM. Creature more player. Yeah, <laughs> that's a guy who hasn't adjusted yet. Okay, well, AMFM radio works. Uh, not great, but certainly serviceable. Well, that's the TMK seven two five from Toyomeka in 1978. Television, radio, cassette recorder. Works reasonably well for being, what, uh, almost 40 years old? Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.